But anyway, for those of you who don't know where we are, this weekend we are uh, spending time with our good friends from All Provide Pet Food. And uh, we've been working with the, these guys at All Provide, I don't know, five, six, six seven years, years six something, years, yeah, a while. Six, years. Um, and these are the guys that are making our pup loaf. Uh, the gently cooked pup loaf. Um, I hear there's a rumor we might start offering raw pup loaf too. So we, we'll see. There's things there's happening. Lots of things happening. Lots of things. There's a lot of stuff happening. Um, and this is Dennis, uh, owner and chief bottle washer and everything else at All Provide. And um, we're really, we're excited when we get to come down here. And tomorrow we will be at the Rescue Dog Games in Atlanta, where All Provide is one of the sponsors. And so Dennis invited us to come down and they're sponsoring an Ask the Vet booth. So I get to spend all day answering <laughs> questions. So much for retirement. <laughs> I know, this retirement thing is just so much fun. But the weather's nice and it'll be a fun day and we'll get to watch lots of dogs play games and have, have a good time. So, um, uh, this week, talking about all these drugs, uh, we've had positive responses and we've had negative responses. And I would say, overall, there's more positive responses and people are very happy to get information that really you should be getting this information from your veterinarian anytime a medication is prescribed. You should be told, hey, you know, these are the side effects that you need to watch for. If you see any of these things, please let us know. These are the things that indicate like you're in deep doo-doo. And these are the things that are just mild side effects that are not really affecting big issues. Um, and I understand that your veterinarian is prescribing these drugs. You trust your veterinarian. And I'm not saying I want you to not trust them. I'm just saying I want you to question more. Um, and... Most of these drugs are not made for long-term use. They are made for short-term, let's get through the crisis and then fix the problem. Because almost everything that we're talking about is stopping symptoms. It's not curing anything that's underlying it. And so today we're going to talk about oclocitinib, which is Apoquel. And this one really does not fix anything, nothing. All it does is stop itch. And that is what it is designed to do. And um, that's what it's supposed to be used for. Now, I get it. And the reason I asked Dennis, besides the fact that we're here and I like him. Um, <laughs> but, the, no, <laughs> but the reason I asked him to come live with me today is because he was the owner. And now uh, one of his very good friends is the owner of Bernice. This is little Bernice, and I fell in love with Bernice when we were here. Let me get that up there for, um, is, can Instagram see that as well? Um, so I fell in love with Bernice when we were here in July making pup loaf. She is the cutest little thing, and she's a foodaholic. She absolutely, mm. she would eat anything that um, she could. <laughs> But she's really cute and sweet and bouncy and happy. I mean, you can see she smiles. She's just, she's an adorable little dog. Um, but Bernice has struggled. Well, tell us Bernice's story. Because it's, it's tell us how she, how you got her to begin with and then kind of how things rolled. I was coming home from dinner with my good friend, Keith. I had just had my Great Dane and my Lab Dane mix die within a couple weeks of each other. The Dane... Lab mix was going on 18 and the Dane was eight and she had very advanced degenerative neuropathy. So I was going to take a dog break. Never not as my adult dentist, I've never not had a dog. So I was going to take a break. And like three weeks later, I come home from dinner and there's this little dog that's been abandoned in front of my apartment. So, so much for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So actually, I do have pictures of the day I found Bernice. She, I didn't. She didn't was think of that. put there for. A, she needed you she guys. Was. She was. So guys. yeah. So this is pre all provide before actually meeting Dr. Judy and learning a lot of things. But um, she started developing allergies around three years old, two to three years old, and they we did elimination diets. We just tried about everything, and um, her dad we. Swap dogs. Uh, her dad and I swapped uh, Bernice for Jace because Bernice would lick into the jowls of my new Great Dane and get all this good food stuff that he had been eating, which would just make her blow up with allergies. 
Because she does have food allergies. Severe. And yeah. she also has environmental allergies. Yeah. 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 And her food allergies come out of her bum. I, yeah. it, it's all <laughs> black. And she would just sit there and chew on it all day long. Eventually, I grabbed Bernice and found a uh, couple of allerg allergists in Atlanta, allergist veterinarian specialists. And we got her there and they did the full lab testing and allergy testing and developed a serum to give her injections. But even that really hasn't helped. If she's allergic, especially depending on the season. It just goes off the hook. Um, she's allergic to human dander. And not yeah. saying I have any, but probably. <laughs> so. That's what her owner uh, sent me a text message and he said, yeah, her biggest allergy is human dander. Go figure. Yeah, yeah. Darn you guys. I know. Darn I know. you. Anyway, <laughs> making your poor dog allergic. But I, she, pork is one thing she's allowed to eat, right? It is. So um, was that why you started making the pork dog food? <laughs> it is because I was buying Tucker's dog food for, for Bernice. So I would go to the pet, pet store, buy food for my dog, for the people that were selling my food. <laughs> so. so so that's why we got the pork formula from All Provide. So that was yeah. great. Um, but Bernice is wonderful. And when everybody's eating something else, she just has to get her pork and then yeah. she's fine. Um, but what what a how old is Bernice now? Uh, Ten. 10. And when did she start on Apoquil? I don't really know when Les started on Apoquil. I would probably well, I think he like said she five was, years ago. Yeah, I think he said she was on it for four years. Yeah, somewhere so, around there. So she was on it for four years. Um, and I haven't been scrolling through the comments, but um, Joyce Rath is a good friend now, started out as a client with her little dog, Susie, who is a little bit similar to Bernice, a uh, little white. Um, she's really adorable. But... Um, when I met, Joyce is on, okay, when I met Susie, she had been on Cytoquel and Apoquel for years, Cytopoint and Apoquel for years, and she uh, had no hair, she was bright red, she was bloody in any spot she could get to, and she had to wear socks and basically like a scuba suit all the time. Like yeah. every inch of the dog was covered so that she couldn't scratch herself, bite herself, and she was just miserably raw. Now. What I would like to point out to everyone is if your dog is that miserable, the Apoquil and the Cytopoint are not working. Like, why? Can't, it's like the definition of insanity. Hey, the dog's still miserable. We'll just keep giving more. We'll up doses, whatever. It's not working. So these drugs really are not, and we're going to talk about Cytopoint on a different day, but these drugs really were not designed to be given long term. They were designed to stop the itch cycle, because that's all it does. It stops the scratching. It does not treat the allergy. It does not, it is not curing anything. It just stops itching. It's not an anti-inflammatory. It's not an immune, well, it's not an immune modulator. It's an immune suppressant, but that's not what it's used for. It's used because it stops itching. It stops the itch cycle. So the goal is that you would use it very short term while you're figuring out what's going on. So you do all the things that these guys did. You get the allergy testing, you do the food testing. And probably one of the things that we didn't know as much about when she started with all this years ago is how important the gut microbiome is fixing the leaky gut because all these dogs with allergies have leaky gut. And so that's something that we've only started talking about a lot more in the last few years. So, Let's talk about, I'm going to talk about all the different side effects that we can see with Apoquel. There, oh, I shoot, I should have put it live on that page too. There's um, uh, there's an Apoquel page for pet owners who have had pets on Apoquel and had a million problems on Facebook. Um, maybe Gwen or Sweta or Caroline or Joey can uh, put the link to that Facebook page. Um, so Apoquel is an immune modulator metabolized in the liver and excreted through the liver and kidneys. Um, currently, there are no FDA safety alerts or manufacturer's warnings, which I think is really scary. However, if you take the time to download or ask your veterinarian for the drug insert, we're going to go through that. There's lots of scary stuff in there, um, but most of the time you're not given the scary information because they don't. Talk about spooky drugs. Uh, so normal side effects, normal, common side effects, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, increased thirst, very common, very, very common. 
Um, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of dogs who cannot stay on the drug because you can't control the diarrhea or the vomiting. And so this becomes one of those situations where it's like, okay, we'll give him Apoquel to stop the itch. Now he's got nausea and vomiting. So now we're going to give um, anti-nausea drugs. We're going to give things for diarrhea. And you end up with your dog on 16 different things because you're giving one that's causing all these side effects. Pancreatitis, big problem with the drug. Um, was a big problem with steroids too. Like, you know, when we switch from one immune suppressant to another, we don't get rid of the side effects. We have a lot of the same side effects. Behavior changes, aggression, hyperreactivity, and seizures. So what that says to me is the neurologic system is also being affected by this drug. Um, heart damage, liver failure, kidney damage. Well, that's most of the important organs. Uh, bone marrow suppression. So with that bone marrow suppression, we get anemia, we get decreased clotting and increased bleeding, and we get super infections because we're wiping out the white blood cells that are the immune system that takes care of the infections. So we get bacterial infections, um, viral infections, fungal infections. So then we end up with these dogs because we've suppressed their immune system. Now they're getting tons of antibiotics. Now these dogs with these allergies who are digging themselves raw, they get a lot of antibiotics when they're not on Apoquel because they're breaking their skin yeah. barrier and then they're being shampooed with things that are um, antibacterial and we're destroying the microbiome that's on the skin. So there's a microbiome on the skin just like there is in the gut and in the respiratory tract. Um, super infections in, in the lungs, pneumonia is very common with this drug. Um, Somebody had posted that their dog got a super infection at 105 degree fever, was in ICU for over a week um, because of this. Uh, UTIs, very, very common. Uh, dental infections. So if you're getting a really bad odor from the mouth, suddenly could be cancer in the mouth, but it also could be dental infections because, again, we're suppressing that immune system. And let's face it, most of our dogs have dirty mouths. Most of them. 80% of them. <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, immune suppression, poor wound healing, because again, we don't have the white blood cells that are able to come in and do the repair. We don't have as many platelets that come in and do the repair. We don't have as much thrombin to come in and do the repair. Um, so it is unsafe for dogs under 12 months old, because when they used it in those, uh, too many super infections because their immune system is not fully developed yet. So huge super infections in them and, and they like to die. Uh, and then also in senior dogs, because again, their immune system is waning and they're going to be more prone to super infections. Plus they're more prone to liver problems and kidney problems as well. Um, viral papillomas. If you've ever, ever uh, seen, if your dog is on Apoquel or any of these immune suppressants and all of a sudden they start getting warts everywhere. And so I used to call them poodle warts when I was first in practice because I would see them in the, all the tiny old poodles they would start getting. Well, then I started calling them cocker warts because all the cockers would get them as well. Um, the worst case of warts I ever saw was in our little dog, Myra, when she had her lymphosarcoma and she was on chemotherapy and high doses of dexamethasone, which is a steroid. Her immune system was wiped out. I literally sat there in my chair and watched warts pop up within a 24 hour period. She oh. had hundreds, hundreds. They, it was, it was like, I wish I had a time lapse camera because that's how fast they were just popping up and it was only a few days before before she passed. Um, it cannot be used in cats or humans. In humans, it causes vision problems, <laughs> plus all the side effects that we see in dogs. So hmm. um, let's see, from the skin, we can get bleeding, dermal masses, dry skin, and hair loss. Um, should not be used in dogs who already have an infection or those who have pre-existing cancer. Um, so the question is, before your dog is started on Apoquel, how many of you had your veterinarian do a complete workup on your dog before you started? Like CBC, chem, thyroid, endocrine testing, Cushing's, because a lot of these dogs with allergies also have endocrine problems going on. So we need to know all of that so that we, we are treating everything that we're not doing that. I'm just honing in on the itch. We have to take a holistic approach. Um, I would check a urine, make sure they don't already have a urinary tract infection. And um, if my dog was middle-aged to older, I might even consider doing abdominal and chest imaging to make sure that there wasn't a mass there that we didn't know about. 
The problem is that cells in our body are mutating all the time. And our immune system runs around and kills off mutated cells because they're like, ooh, they're ugly, they're bad, they're not supposed to be here. That's a foreign body. And our immune system kills them off. Well, what happens when we stop the immune system from working? Those mutated cells go, ooh, this is fun. I'm going to make more. And then we get cancer. And that is one of the biggest problems with this drug. So in a long-term trial where they looked at dogs that had been on Apoquil for long-term, Within 392 days, 5% of the dogs developed cancer. So that's 13 months, 5%. Millions and millions and millions of doses of this drug are sold. Imagine, and we're seeing the cancer rate in our dogs climb and climb and climb. This is one of the reasons. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. So uh, one of the other problems is it's supposed to be given um, – twice a day for no more than 14 days, and then it's supposed to go to once a day, and a lot of veterinarians will keep them on twice a day dosing because it stops working after a while. So we just keep upping the doses. Um, the company says it doesn't cause cause any of these problems. It only worsens them if they already exist. <laughs> um, okay. Shocking. Shocking. Um, okay. So there's all the problems with it, and I'm going to read some of the stuff from the drug insert, and then I'm going to talk about, because I, this is one of the things everybody's here, because you want to know, what do I do instead, because my dog tears himself apart. And I just want to say that little Susie, who belongs to Joyce, I think it's been five years, maybe, since she started down this journey. And I saw Susie a few weeks ago, and she has hair. She doesn't have to wear her socks and her clothes all the time, and she's happy, but it's taken that long. So when you have these problems and when you've had them on immune suppressants for a really long time, don't expect it to get better overnight. Don't think, oh, I'm just going to stop this drug today and then they'll be better tomorrow. And by the way, if your dog is on this and you suddenly stop, there's a rebound effect. They will tear themselves to shreds. You got this is one of those. They don't sit. They say you don't have to wean them down. I'm just telling you, if you do a quick stop, they're going to tear themselves up. OK, so this is in the drug insert. In the 283 dogs that received Apoquel, the following additional clinical signs were reported after beginning Apoquel. Pyoderma, which is infection of the skin, 12%. Non-specified dermal lumps, skin lumps, 12%. Otitis, which is ear infection, 10%. Vomiting, 9%. Diarrhea, 6%. Histiocytoma, which is a semi-benign uh, tumor that is a relative of mast cells, 4%, cystitis, 3.5%, that's infection or inflammation, infection in the bladder. Uh, anorexia, 3%, not eating, lethargy, 3%. Yeasty skin infections, 2.5%. Pododermatitis, which is infections in the feet, 2.5%. Lipomas, 2%. Uh, increased thirst, uh, yeah, 1.4%. Lymphadenopathy, 1.1%, swollen lymph nodes. Now, if we're suppressing the immune system, why are lymph nodes swelling up. That's really scary. Nausea, 1%, which is funny. They separate that out from vomiting. Uh, increased, increased appetite, 1%. Aggression, 1%. And weight loss, 1%. Um, <clears throat> let's see. 239 dogs were enrolled in a continuation study. Uh, of those dogs, one developed um, severe generalized demodicos demodicosis, which is demodex uh, mange at 273 days. One developed pigmented viral plaques at 266 days. One developed moderately severe bronchopneumonia at 272 days. One dog was euthanized after developing fluid in the abdomen and chest. Uh, six dogs were euthanized because of malignant cancers, uh, including thoracic metastatic, abdominal metastatic, splenic, frontal sinus, and uh, intracranial, so brain and transitional cell carcinoma. One of those only 17 days after starting the drugs. Um, let's see, two dogs each developed a grade two mast cell tumor. One developed B cell lymphoma. Two uh, each developed apocrine gland adenocarcinoma. And one developed a, an oral spindle cell sarcoma. That's a lot. It's a lot, it's scary. Um, so, and not all adverse events are reported to the FDA. We estimate that 
is reported. So if you go on the FDA website and you look for adverse, re- you can look up any drug on the FDA website for adverse reactions reported, and you can look up specific drugs. So if you were to go look this one up, and I should have and I didn't, um, if they've had 10,000 complaints, multiply that by 100 because we think that only 1% is reported. That is the estimate. Most veterinarians will not report because part of the problem is getting them to believe that your dog's cancer is, or your dog's pneumonia is related to the drug. And if they're on multiple drugs, figuring out which drug. Personally, I think you should just report them all. Um, So reported to the FDA in decreased order of reporting frequency, vomiting, lethargy, anorexia, diarrhea, elevated liver enzymes, uh, skin inflammation and infection with crusts, uh, toe infections, uh, seizures, increased drinking, and demodex. Benign, malignant, and unclassified tumors, skin masses, including papillomas and histiocytomas, lymphoma, and other cancers, and death. That's what's been reported to the FDA. Uh, So here was a 112-day controlled study conducted at 18 U.S. veterinary hospitals. They enrolled client-owned dogs with allergies. Um, And let's see, by day 30, 15% of the Apoquel group dogs withdrew from the study because of worsening clinical signs. They got worse, not better. That's 15%, folks, probably because their infections got so much worse. Um, Let's see. Then they took healthy one-year-old beagles um, and gave them the drug twice daily for six weeks and then once daily for 20 weeks. Um, Let's see, observations that were considered likely to be related to Apoquel included papillomas, so those viral warts, uh, and dose-dependent increase in the number and frequency of uh, toe infections of one or more feet. Additional observations included dermatitis with local hair loss, redness, abrasion, scabbing, crusts, and swelling of the feet, uh, and large lymph nodes. and then when they looked microscopically, because remember this is that when you're doing lab studies like this, they kill them at the end of the study. Uh, and then they do a necropsy. And what they found um, was decreased lymphoid cellularity in the gut associated lymphoid tissue, the spleen, the thymus, the lymph nodes, and decreased sternal or decreased cellularity in the bone marrow. So basically, we have killed off the immune system because that's where all the immune cells, and that's what they were looking at. We killed them off. Um, Five of the dogs that were treated had microscopic evidence of interstitial pneumonia. And uh, clinical pathology or lab findings included reduction in hemoglobin, hematocrit, and reticulocytes. So that's the red cell line being killed off. Decreases in the white cell line of lymphocytes. So that's really important in our immune system, eosinophils and basophils. Um, total protein was decreased over time uh, due to albumin fraction. Albumin is made by the liver, so that means the liver is not making it and it's not happy. Um, so then they did another study with 26-week-old dogs. One was euthanized on day 74 after physical examination revealed the dog to have a fever, be lethargic, have pale mucous membranes and frank blood in the stool. Necropsy revealed pneumonia, Evidence of chronic lymphadenitis uh, or inflammation of the lymph nodes in the abdomen. Um, and then during the three month recovery phase of that study, one treated dog at 32 weeks old was euthanized on day 28 due to enlarged lymph nodes, eye drainage, lethargy, trouble breathing, and fever, had a high white cell count, and it had sepsis secondary to immunosuppression. This is why they don't want you to use it on dogs under 12 months old. Um, and a margin of safety study in six-month-old dogs was discontinued after four months to the development of bacterial pneumonia and generalized demodex mange infections in the dogs. So, scary stuff. Um, I, and look, I'm not trying to be a jerk, and I'm not trying to tell you not to treat your dogs and not to get them relief. And I understand that sometimes you're backed into a corner and you don't know what else to do. Um, So I'm going to run through a lot of things that you can try. And I know that a lot of you have already tried a lot of things, just like these guys tried with Bernice. And I did not give you the um, where we are now with Bernice. Would you like to tell everybody where we are now with Bernice? Bernice now has lymphoma. So she was diagnosed uh, last week. So not good. Pretty sad. Yeah. Everybody's very sad. 
What are you doing? Are you, is she going to have chemo? No. No? Okay. I don't think so. That's not my decision, but I don't think it is. Okay. Good. Well. You had good success with chemo with dogs? For lymphoma, I sent him a couple um, links, so I'll talk to him about it. Okay. But, um, yeah, so now we have poor little Bernice with lymphoma. Yeah. So, so, you know, this, I had this scheduled to talk about this week and, um, I got that email from last, last week, uh, just about a week, I guess the day yeah. she got diagnosed. And, um, then we were coming here and I said, well, what perfect timing to talk about this and it hits home. Um, okay. So what can you do? All right. I'm hoping I'm not watching the, uh, comments here. Partly because I have my glasses off, I can't see squat. All right, some somebody did post incurable canine uh, atopic dermatitis blog. Thank you very much, whoever is and pinned that at the top. Um, sweat is on. Okay, yeah, somebody from the team that that one actually looks like it might have been Gwen, but anyway, somebody our team is good. Um, so first off, we have to fix the gut and we have to fix the diet. You cannot continue to feed waste product food and expect to get anywhere. So even though Bernice was started on raw food very early and she was started on, I mean, once you guys, you guys started making her food. So making her food. Yeah. Um, and, but you know what? It still didn't solve the problem because she was allergic to beef and chicken, chicken and, and, turkey. and Turkey. And so you name it. And so until you figure out which protein they can have, he was doing elimination diets for two weeks. Then we'd see how that would go, and we'd go to another elimination diet. He did homeopaths. He did holistics. And then we went – there's only a couple uh, skin and allergy veterinarians in Atlanta, and we went to one of what was considered one of the best in Atlanta. Right, oh, and they're great yeah. for doing the testing. I mean, God yeah. bless dermatologists because they can do the skin scrape tests, and, you know, they can, they can do all that good stuff to give you good information. So and they're when, pushing Abiquil as well. Oh, heck yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would go th to them for diagnostics and then I think I would say, yeah, I'm going to treat, treat it with something else. Thank you very much. We did a lot of allergy desensitization injections for environmental allergies. They have about a 75% success rate. Um, and if you could decrease the itching, like if you have a really, really severe dog and you could decrease itching by 75%, then go for it. But it takes at least a year. You have to do at least a year of immunotherapy. And I think she's been on it. Three or four years. Yeah. And so what we found in our practice, uh, we would have some dogs, they would develop new things. Like we'd be using their immunotherapy and they'd be doing okay. And then all of a sudden they would just be horrible again. And we would retest and it's like, oh, need, need different serum. So we did find that to be a problem. Um, uh, and again, we were not working nearly as hard at fixing leaky gut because that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. Um, so one of the things that I would encourage Anybody who has a dog with allergies of any kind, any immune system problem, go through the leaky gut protocol. Um, we have the Adored Beast leaky gut protocol. There are other protocols out there. Figure out what food works for your dog. You can use NutriScan. You can use the blood testing for it. None of them are 100%. They're not the be-all, end-all. So, for instance, I just had NutriScan done on Forest. Um, and we finally figured out on our own that he gets bloody vomiting diarrhea every time he eats rabbit. Rabbit's non-allergenic. Not for him, but his NutriScan came back fine. But I hadn't given him rabbit for quite a while before I did the NutriScan. So sometimes things can be skewed a little bit. Um, and you did you figured out the pork just by doing the elimination? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that takes a long and time to do. And she did well with rabbit too. Yeah. So it just takes a long time to do the elimination trials. And a dermatologist will tell you that to do a good elimination trial, you need eight to 12 weeks. So if you've got to go through 10 proteins, eight to 12 weeks each, oh my gosh, it's a long process. So that's why I use either the blood testing or the NutriScan as kind of like a, a guideline. Like if the NutriScan comes up, you know, this one's sky high, I'm like, well, get that one out of there right away. So it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, so first thing, fix the gut, fix the leaky gut, find something that agrees with them. I don't know of any kibble in the world that is going to solve this. So those hydrolyzed diets that they recommend, they work 50% of the time, max, 50%. So don't expect that to solve your dog's problem. And if that's the only change you've made in diet to try to fix it, and good. did you guys use hydrolyzed diets at all? No. Yeah. Good for you. Um, you might have started talking to me by then. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So... 
And then we need a clean environment for these guys. So most of these dogs, theirs is allergic to um, human dander. Well, human dander clings to things. Uh, so in our house, the only allergic dog we have is Stewie, and he's got flea allergy uh, is his only one, but um, dust mites and storage mites. So that's another problem with dry kibble, storage mites. If your kibble is, once you open that bag, if it's stored more than three weeks, I don't care how you store it, you get storage mites. So dogs will react to those as well. So I, for high, it's like people who have highly allergic children, they don't have carpet in their house. They don't have stuffed animals in their house. They have leather furniture because that's where all this dust and stuff settles. Now I get not everybody can run out and, you know, rip up their carpets and put in new floors and buy new furniture. Um, but since we just built a house, we build it to that specification so that we don't have to worry about those things. Um, flea allergy dermatitis is the number one allergy. So you absolutely have to control fleas. One flea bite, the, what they're allergic to is the saliva. And this goes for dogs and cats. One flea bite, three weeks of itching. It's a vicious cycle, vicious. Stewie gets one flea bite, man, we get hot spots. He chews himself raw. It's horrible. Um, so, and I would say essential oils, not chemicals. We talked about the flea stuff earlier this week. Please don't use the bad chemicals. Um, if you have a dog who is broken out a lot or they're uh, prone to skin infections, if you can find a groomer that has a TheraClean bathing uh, system, they're like $18,000 soon. Not that many groomers have them, but if you go to thera-clean, um, I don't know if it's a .com, .net, whatever it is, uh, maybe somebody from the team can post it. Uh, it is a micro bubble system. It was developed in Japan um, and it will take all the crud up out of the skin. And a lot of times you can avoid using antibiotics with that. Uh, sometimes they're bright red after the first bath, but after you do a few, things calm down. Um, it's an amazing system, and I know Michelle Allen has one at Monkey's House. We have cured Demodex using that. Uh, we've cured skin infections without antibiotics using that system. Uh, on their website, they do have a groomer finder. Some veterinarians now have them as well. Um, probiotics. So in addition to fixing our gut, part of the leaky gut protocol is probiotics. Uh, but you could do like the animal biome testing to see how much dysbiosis you have in the GI tract to see how bad it is. And a lot of these dogs with these severe allergies, and particularly if they're on immune suppressants, you'll get that back and they're going to, they have this little dial. You'll be way over here in the, oh my gosh, it's a train wreck. Um, and so you've got, we've got to get that fixed. Um, at the uh, Redefining Health Expo a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about allergies and Rita Hogan, who's an herbalist, said that she absolutely loves nettles. Um, that's kind of her number one herb to go to. So um, if you haven't tried that, and nettles are in the green juju um, greens, the dehydrated greens. Um, so you might look at something like that. Bromelain can help, resveratrol, plant sterols, Local honey or bee pollen can work very, very well for these guys. If you uh, are somebody who wants to do homeopathy, there are a lot of good homeopaths out there. Di Blanco, um, a lot of people have been using Charles Loops. Um, uh, there's another guy down in Florida. Can't think of his name. Anyway, there are good homeopaths out there. So if you want to go that route, um, if you can find a holistic practitioner, Chinese herbs, uh, there's one called external wind that is very helpful for a lot of my patients with aller seasonal allergies. Uh, we would use the external wind or great wind keeper and we would know when their season is. So we'd start about a week before and then run through their season. And a lot of times that was the only thing that we had to use for them. Uh, you can use aloe, you can use omega-3 fatty acids in high doses. So if they're allergic to whitefish, use a salmon oil. If they're allergic to salmon and whitefish, use a phytoplankton or an algae um, so that we're getting those omega-3s at high doses. Uh, the PEA, uh, I know somebody from our team can post that, really good for allergies. And then uh, mushrooms. All the, the, the three best mushrooms, in my opinion, are reishi because it's an immune modulator. And when I say immune modulator, that is not an immune suppressant. That's trying to make the immune system work the way that it needs to. So it's not revving it up. It's not damping it down. It's smoothing it out. Um, so we've got reishi. We have cordyceps, which is a great anti-inflammatory. 
and then also chaga. Uh, all of those are in the five defenders mushroom. So you could use a combination product and not have to use um, a bunch of different ones. And for animals who are on Apoquel, I would absolutely be protecting them with turkey tail because turkey tail likes to scavenge for those pre-malignant cells. We use it in treating cancers as well. Um, so either the, the turkey tail mushroom powder or the turkey tail extract absolutely um, would be helpful for these guys. All right, what did I not cover? Uh, this drug was approved in 2014, so it's been out for eight years. Um, and that's not a very long time. That's actually a new drug. So, um, you know, I think as the years go by and we see more and more and more reactions and problems. Actually, it came out about the, boy, we tried to kill a lot of dogs that year. It was out in Europe quite a bit earlier. Was it? Yeah. So uh, this this hit the market here about the same time as the Isox Azulene flea and tick stuff. And it came out here a year after we opened. There you go. Yep. There you go. So, uh, and I'm supposed to remind everybody, sign up for the Nutrition Summit so you can learn more about this stuff. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think it launched today, the uh, post Nutrition Summit TCVM nutrition course that I'm doing. Only 50 people can sign up for that. So that's a big deal too. Anywho, um, so we're all gonna cross our fingers for Bernice. We're gonna think good things. We're gonna think good things for all the other dogs out there that have been diagnosed with cancer secondary to this drug. Um, I get it for those of you who just had to do something just like these guys did. I'm, I'm not shaming anybody. I'm not telling you that you have to change what you're doing. I'm just, I just want you to know what the potential is. And I want you to know that it's not curing anything. You, you still need to work really hard to get to the bottom of the problem. And you might be like Joyce with Susie. You know, it might take five years to finally have a little peace. I think Susie's about the same age as Bernice now. <laughs> it's really, it's scary. Um, but this little dog, Bernice, we don't know her background. She, no. Actually, you found out more about her background. Well, I found, I found out just by going to dinner, I've run into some of her litter mates and a homeless guy had had a pillowcase full of them. He was selling for 20 bucks each. How she got away, I don't know, but she did. Um, she's the sweetest dog. She is. Just the sweetest dog. <laughs> she didn't want to be 20 bucks. She wanted to be free. And she wanted to go to your house because she knew you would spend $20,000 on her <laughs> or more. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the problem. I, I get the frustration for these dogs with allergies because you guys will break your bank accounts trying to treat these dogs, trying to heal these dogs. And then when they get cancer, you get to break your, break your bank account all over again. And it's just no fun for anybody. And it's just heartbreaking. It's just, yeah, it breaks your heart to, to look at this lovely little puppy yep. or girl and watch her just rip herself apart yep. day in, day out. It's just horrible. Yep.